Today we're going to be testing out the 5 watt laser on my 3018 CNC and seeing what materials it can handle. I'll test everything from cutting wood to engraving rocks and seeing what happens to jello under a laser. I'm going to be testing what materials this laser can engrave, what thickness it can cut through, and at the end hopefully you'll have a better idea of whether or not it's actually worth it to buy a laser with your 3018 CNC. We're going to start with the most commonly laser engraved material, which is wood. This is a standard piece of cabinet plywood. Here we go. All of these tests will be conducted with a 5.5 watt laser, and I'll put the actual power setting in the lower left hand corner as well as the speed and any other important information. That turned out great. Let's try a solid piece of wood from a floorboard next. Again, we got a very similar result. Ignore some of the random lines and other engravings on this piece because I used the same piece for my initial tests and calibration. Next up, the last piece in the wood series, a quarter inch thick piece of plywood. Same clean result. It looks like engraving wood is generally very viable with this machine. A quick word about safety before we continue. I would not trust the laser safety glasses that came with my CNC kit to protect my eyes. I'd rather suggest buying safety glasses from a reputable source such as Survival Lasers. I'm not sponsored by them, I just think that they make great laser safety equipment. Anyways, let's try this vinyl plastic material next. I'm using this tree shape for every material so that we have an even comparison between the different materials. This one turned out okay, but there's a lot of variability between the lighter and darker areas. The design actually melted into the plastic, so maybe in these more dense areas the laser spends more time and therefore heats up the plastic more. In an area like this, there's no surrounding cuts, so the plastic doesn't heat up as much before the laser actually engraves there. Next, we're going to try aluminum. However, aluminum could be challenging to engrave because it acts as a mirror for the laser. Let's try it anyways. That barely did anything. As a last ditch attempt, let's max out the laser power and slow the speed way down. All the way down to 5 millimeters per minute. Nope, it still didn't even make a mark, even at half a centimeter a minute. But while etching, it did make some pretty cool patterns on the ceiling. This is why it's so important to wear good laser safety glasses. While I failed to engrave aluminum, I haven't given up on it yet. I've ordered some anodized aluminum plates that'll hopefully be able to engrave in a future video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Next on the list is paper and cardboard. So it turns out that paper doesn't actually want to be engraved, and the laser will either cut straight through it or not touch it at all. Also, paper burns. Who would have guessed? Whoops. <laughs> I guess this gives the phrase laser printer a whole new meaning. To test cardboard, we'll cannibalize the cereal box and put a piece under the laser. Cardboard did very well. I'm impressed. I think this has been the cleanest and most consistent etching out of all the previous tests. Now let's get to some more exotic materials. First, we have rock. I'll just go ahead and grab a rock from outside and we'll see if this laser can mark it. I think this rock didn't work because it was semi-translucent, so it scattered the light inside instead of absorbing it on the surface. Let's try something darker that won't be able to do this, like a brick. A brick is too tall to fit in my machine, so I had to break off a few smaller pieces. The result of this one is interesting, but I didn't get the full tree because the piece wasn't big enough. But it for sure marked the surface. And this isn't just ash or anything because it can't be rubbed off. It looks like it melted the surface and then solidified again. Very cool. This is one of my personal favorites so far. I want to try acrylic, but acrylic is clear and I don't know what's going to happen here, so I'm just going to crank the power to maximum and hope that something actually happens. I actually expected nothing to happen, but it looks like something did happen. You can definitely see the tree pattern on the acrylic, but the top surface is still completely smooth. It looks like the laser went through the acrylic completely, hit the wood underneath, and the heat generated on the surface of the wood melted and burned the acrylic. Not a great result, but it might work with lower power, more fine-tuned settings, or maybe with tape over the acrylic. Now that we've seen what this thing can engrave, let's see what it can cut through. We'll start with the thinnest materials and then work our way up to the thickest. First up is paper. It's not very thick at one-tenth of a millimeter. 
I don't want to use too much power or move too slow because I might set the paper on fire. That wasn't enough power to cut through the paper. Maybe we should up the power and go a little bit slower. This time the circle came out pretty well. The square almost came out, minus this one side. But the triangle was still firmly in the paper. Let's try that again, going even slower and with more power. I'm looking for clean cuts all the way around. At this speed and power, the circle and square fell out on their own, while the triangle still needed a little prodding. I think 1000 millimeters per minute and 90% power would probably be ideal for paper on this machine. Next we'll try cutting through cereal box cardboard, a slightly thicker material, and therefore I'm going to do 5 passes over the cut. With these settings, the laser cut through the cardboard part of the cereal box, but didn't go through the outer printed layer. Let's try again with higher power, lower speed, and double the amount of passes. With these settings, all three shapes fell out on their own. Can't complain about that. Now that we tried all the practical materials, let's try some more interesting materials. The moment you've all been waiting for has come, we'll try to laser cut jello. Full steam ahead at 5.5 watts and a feed rate of 500 millimeters per minute. I'm not sure what's going to happen here, but it should be interesting. As the laser went around, the jello actually broke apart and split into two pieces. You can actually see the circular path that the laser took to cut the jello. I'd say this is a complete success. But what I think is really cool about this piece of jello under the laser is that you can actually see the laser beam travel through the jello and how it changes direction after the laser hits the surface depending on the angle of the surface. That's fascinating. Alright, in all seriousness, if you're thinking of buying one of these laser attachments, they're a fun toy and could turn out to be a useful tool as well. If you want to use it for engraving, it works well with a lot of materials. But if you're looking to cut anything thicker than cardboard, you might have some issues. Also, make sure you do this either outside or in a very well-ventilated cabinet. I built a special plexiglass enclosure with a fume extractor for my laser. With that being said, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and I'll catch you in the next video.